Crew 2.0 sucks hard. There is no way anybody can deny this. You might have seen after one hour of the release of the videos to Crew 2.0 the second iteration that the like and dislike ratio were demolishingly bad. 40% on the EU server, 38% on the NA server and 52 and 71 on the German and the Russian version. But five days later it looks like the people finally started to notice that Crew 2.0's second iteration is an absolute shit show. So yeah, in today's video I want to talk about the positives because there are positives in this Crew 2.0 second iteration and even in Crew 2.0 in general. Then I want to talk about the negatives and why they are negative, while at the end of the video give my own proposal to Wargaming how I would do Crew 2.0 or rather Crew 1.5 because I think this is what the majority of the people want. They want a soft transition to a reworked system which is more in line to something we already have. So yeah, let's be fair and talk about the positives first. First thing is that Wargaming removed 50 to 99% crews. This was basically just a hindrance for new players to get into the game. It's a great move and something we desperately needed. It is actually my go-to argument when I'm talking to people which say we don't need a crew rework at all. Because this is something which is so fundamentally wrong that it's so nice to see that it's finally getting tackled. So definitely in whatever iteration crew comes to the game, we definitely do not need 50 and 99% crews anymore. Just give us 100% crews all the time. Next up, I think it's great that the crew is now being represented by just one single person. It can be frustrating to grind out the E100 line for example, to then have the additional loader which you now have to grind out for your tier 10 vehicle. In general it's just annoying and I think simplifying it to just one person is a good move and again Wargaming did say they wanted to simplify things looking at the tech trees. Also other tanks like the Gzor to the Manticore or the Mighty Core rather, well you know it also makes it a lot easier and simpler. So yeah, I definitely want to see that as well. Giving everyone 6 cents for free as well as RD6 cents is great. You might argue that giving RD6 cents for free as well is a little bit too much, but I would say that it's still alright. Like this is up to debate where we can say, yeah, maybe it's too much, maybe it isn't too much. But the fact is, Everybody was screaming at Wargaming that we finally get sixth sense for everybody. Again, that's a thing with World of Warships did ages ago. So I'm glad to see that Wargaming really wants to implement this as well. And lastly, I think being able to train one crew theoretically to three tanks is also a great thing. It's also something a lot of people asked for. We kind of wished for this to happen with field modifications but uh, sadly enough it didn't happen. But the thing is right now for example I would only need one crew to play the E100, the Maus and the Panzerkampfwagen 7. I say I have all similar-ish playstyles and I can use them and I can just use one of my high-end crews while I then later down the road say you know what my mouse crew is going to go into the VKB, the Moissian and the E75 and maybe my E75 crew is going to go into the Tiger 2, the VKA and the VK101P. In general it is a really really decent idea and the same goes obviously for the EBR and the 13105 as they have similar playstyles as well as most tier 10 Russian mediums. However, this is the perfect segue to go into the negatives. Because the fact that for an 80 skill point crew you need to pay either 750 gold to retrain it to another tank or half a million credits to then lose roughly 350,000 XP by also having to reskill all your skills again is kind of ridiculous, if you ask me. So yeah. And let's have a look at my screenshot of my French crew right here. It is the one of my Amex 30105 and as you can see each individual crew member has 3.7 million crew XP on each. 
It says, the average XP per battle is roughly 950, and the battles fought are 660 if we round it up. So if we take the average XP per battle earned and divide it by the 350,000 we would lose, well, you know, we would need to play 368 games to just get back where we started. <laughs> yeah, 368 games. Sure, this doesn't include premium boosters, I think it doesn't include boosters in general, but yeah. However, you also see that it doesn't really make sense with the amount of battles played, you know? So if we divide the 3.7 million by the 660 games, we would get 5600 XP per battle. That would still mean we need around 61 battles to get back where we started, while having played half a million credits and having to reskill the entire tree to what we wanted to have. Sure, if you have a worse crew, it's not a big deal, as it's procedural, but you are usually going to retrain a high skill crew to another tank as you are unlocking those two additional slots through reaching levels 20s and level 50 for free. Otherwise, you gotta pay for the level 20 slot 750 gold and level 50 slot 1500 gold. And again, this does not include the retraining, so you would need to pay an additional 750 each to retrain to the new spot. The next big thing and biggest issue I'm having right now with the new crew 2.0 system is that if you want to have a somewhat competitive crew, you will have to have 80 skill points to be used in the sandbox system. Where in the other side, when we are looking at the live server, a 3 to 4 skill crew is enough with 6 cents, brothers in arms, repairs camo, depending what you're playing, and some furin skills and some other perks, and you are done. You have a good enough crew to play in a competitive environment and play competitively in randoms. But let's just look at what we get for that. A 4 skill crew, which is now the higher end, which I would say is comfortable, just gives you 65 points. You are short 15 points of this theoretically competitive state. And don't forget about the endless progression, where you get additional vehicle handling. I did talk with different community contributors, I did talk with different competitive gamers from Fame and other high-end clans, as well as some people from Oda Mortis, and we all roughly came to agree that we need 10% additional vehicle handling. And this is comparable to now having a 6 skill crew. Yes, a 6 skill crew. I've looked through my garage and looked through my crews, what I have right now. And as you probably know, I've played this game quite a lot. And I've came around having 4 crews which have 6 skills right now. <laughs> 4! With 52,000 games under my belt. Yeah, and that is a big difference. This obviously would mean that you need to grind out lots and lots and lots more crews, credits to get to this level 80. And again, I would say that I have better crews than your average Joe Mo yet again. Sure, there are some people which are massive with their Panzer 1Cs, which have like 20,000 games, Luxus 20,000 games, VK2801 30,000 games, who knows, 8 skill crew, they have the crews maxed out. They would get obviously 15% vehicle handling additionally. But yeah. I don't think that your average show will be able to get to such a high level. Because sure, you might say, well, if you want to be competitive, you basically just need one-ish crew per nation, which is kind of not really correct, because, let's be honest, we have the Manticore, which is needed, we have the Chieftain, which is needed, AK uses the Super Conqueror crew, then we have the 907, which is needed, which uses the 140 crew, then we have the 279, which is needed, which uses the IS-7 or IS-4 or insert random Russian heavy tank crew, then we have Artis, which need their separate crew, we have the EBR, which needs their separate crew, you know, the CS-63, which needs its separate crew, maybe an STB-1 or a Karanwagen, you suddenly need to get a lot more to once again be competitive, especially random battles and especially in Clan Wars battles. So yeah, <laughs> that is just bad. But oh boy lads, Wargaming has the solution for you. Because obviously, in theory, you can buy yourself up, right? 
And this is what I want to do right now, a little thought experiment. How much crew XP would you need to get to level 80 flat stat? Roughly 6.5 million. <laughs> this is 26. 2 million credit crew books. This means to get from level 1 to level 80, or skill level 80, you need 52 million credits for one crew, for one crew only. Add another million to get it to two different tanks, while also maybe having to calculate in another 6 million credits to get, well, back up to level 80. <laughs> that is ridiculous. That is so ridiculous if you ask me. Like seriously, that's 59 million credits to get a crew to level 80 and get it into free tanks. <laughs> I like, I wasted a lot of credits in the black market, but th this is uh, overdoing it a little bit. But well, do you want to use free XP? Because that obviously works. You want to go from level 1 to level 80. That would be 1.32 million free XP. And as you probably know, free XP is something you can get easily in World of Tanks. Sarcasm. So yeah, let's be nice to Wargaming and say we have the best conversion rate of 1 gold to 43 XP. This would still be 33,000 gold, which is a little over 110 euros for one crew. And again, this does not include getting it to two different crews. Obviously this would be like 115 euros then if you just use gold. However, that is again not all you obviously want to get a competitive crew and not a somewhat competitive crew. Meaning you also have to pump in more XP to get at least 10% vehicle handling, which is four additional endless progression levels. And for that you would need, well, 3.5 million if you round it up crew XP or 700,000 free XP. Obviously, don't forget, now you are not allowed to use crew books anymore. So, that is kind of annoying. And it's also annoying that you actually are losing XP when you go over this threshold. It's just a hindrance once again, like a hurdle, which I don't understand Wargaming to introduce. Well, I guess I do understand it because they want to make more money with sales of free XP. But it's just, like, it's so blatantly obvious that for me as a player, it's just, ugh, you know. But yeah. Now, if we once again take our 1 to 40 free XP gold conversion rate, we would need another 17,500 gold to get to this vehicle handling level 4, aka 10% vehicle handling. If it would be crew books, still would be 28 million credits. So to sum it up, if you would get a new level 1 crew and start training it, it you would need 52 million credits for the crew books to get it once to level 80 and an additional 70,000 excuse me, 700,000 free XP worth, roughly 60 euros. And if you would only use gold, it would be 170 euros. And if we are generous yet again, it would be still, hmm, let's say around 85 euros when you would use only the gold you get from the Christmas boxes. And then there you obviously need to be a little bit lucky with duplicates. That's a big oof. So. Let's go back to the live server. Meanwhile, in the current system, you need five books to get a new crew to free skills. <laughs> five! That is like nothing, that's 10 million. Sure, it is a lot still for most players, which are not stupid like me, but that's five. If you want to get four skills, you need an additional seven books or in total 12 books to go from zero to level four skill crew. Far less than the 26 needed. It's 24 million versus 52. Like, you know, it's basically double. <laughs> it's literally double. It's more than double. <laughs> like, that's quite a big of a difference. And yes, you might argue, but you will need more crews on the live server. I totally get this. This is a valid argument. Uh, but still, it is easier to get one crew be at an acceptable level in the current system. And again, please don't forget, you can get to another crew for this less price again, which is just, uh. And with this four skill crew, I will feel confident enough to go play competitive games in Clan Wars, in Ranked, and also free mark, for example, a Super Conqueror, a beast of a heavy tank. So in short, getting a competitive crew takes a lot more resources than what it does right now on the live server. 
Also, although the feature is cool to use one crew for three tanks, which would mean you don't need three separate crews, it's still packed with stupid penalty, which can take away the long to regrind if you don't use gold. And again, as a little side note, losing XP because you go above level 80 with the crew books is just mean. Again, just why? We already said probably Wargaming is a little bit too blatant about wanting to make money. Another issue would be the endless progression, but I already discussed it previously and I just have to say it is not a good idea because you need to pump in so much time and effort and you basically just make some certain tanks ridiculously overpowered and we're going to have some little snippets right now. The sky is the limit. That is just how this crew 2.0 feels. I could go through all these skills right now and give you an explanation of it. If there is people which really want that, let me know in the comment section below. But I will not do that right now because otherwise this video will be one hour long and I really do not want to do this right now because I don't think anyone has the time for that. So the thing about the crew skills in general is they just make everything better. That's literally how it is and literally how it works. It is actually kind of ridiculous how much more you can boost certain tanks. Let's take the Chieftain for an example. If I've played on my CC account with a 100% all crew on the live server, I get up to 3355 DPM. That's just how it is. If I now take my slightly potato-ish crew from the live server from my normal account and plug it into crew 2.0, we have 135.5% gun vehicle handling and we have 3525 dpm. That's almost an increase of 200 dpm or in numbers that is roughly almost half a second quicker reload. Yes, it is that ridiculous. And please keep in mind, my chieftain crew or the chieftain skills I've took include and are not limited to coherence, which gives me 2.5 additional vehicle handling if an ally is close to me, close combat if an enemy is in between 50 meters around me, I get an additional 2.5 vehicle handling, meaning I can get an additional 5% vehicle handling. Yeah, it starts to stack up. I did inclined to go for things like Thrill the Hunt to make my gun more accurate because I thought the return fire might be a bit more or better for the chieftain as you usually are going to block some things. But the thing is this is probably not the best setup you can get for the chieftain anyway. You can go for Fighting Spirit because it shouldn't be a big issue to do 1.5 times your HP and you would get an additional 7.5% uh, vehicle handling that is equal to a bond once in game. Now that is fun, right? And obviously you co could go for applied mechanic which allows you to get for 20 seconds 7.5% fast reload to even boost your DPM more. I just went for a more competitive <coughs> speed build because usually in competitiveness you want to get into positions quicker. That is why you are using a turbo on the Chieftain. So yeah, it just balloons in my opinion out of control. Want another example? Let's go for the SDB1. SDB1 on the CC account on the live server 4059 DPM. With the same setup, I have better gun handling, by the way, as well. Obviously, this is just how Crew 2.0 is. <laughs> um, I have 4,200 DPM. 1,000, uh, 150 DPM more than what I would have on the live server. Or around 0.2 seconds quicker reload time. Yes, you might say that is not that much, but do you get that literally this is sky's the limit? Because it can go better. My live server crews don't have a, not that much vehicle handling. I can get up to 15%. I can get an additional 5%, which is another vents on top for just puring XP after XP into a certain crew. So that makes it just ridiculous. Wanna have another example? Here we have an example for a Super Conqueror build where you have fully stacked out vehicle handling. And what do you get? Almost four. 1000 dpm and the more people you're shooting at 
the better gun handling you get. And if you do 1.5 times your HP, you get an additional bond when it's stuffed up your butthole. And that is just ridiculous. Seriously, Wargaming should try to slow the game down, not remove another minute of game time, making us not have five minute games, but four and three minute games. And um, this is the biggest issue I'm having with Crew 2.0. It makes the game quicker and it sadly enough has a very weird pay to win element included. The instructors. The instructors are straight up the wrong idea of what they are on the live server. On live server you use zero skill crews to get quicker to your four skill power spike, your four skill spike to be competitive, you know? Because you basically just need the XP needed for free people. However, in Crew 2.0, they are basically necessary to make your crews even better. They allow you to stack up more skills, for example, into Brothers in Arms. And if you have the amazing crews, aka the ones you can only get via paying, like the Offspring, like a Rudy crew, like the Swedish Sabaton crew, well, what happens? You basically get two and a half skills in, for, in theory for free. <laughs> you get 10 points into Brothers in Arms, 10 points into Coherence as far as I know, and 4 points in one of those spotting skills, which I think is covert surveillance. That is just ridiculous. That's literally just ridiculous. Sure, it means that you won't be really able to get either Fighting Spirit or Team Spirit those talents, which I also think are completely out of character for World of Tanks. So just boot them. It's just frustrating. Seriously, those instructors are completely going off rail and most of them, which you can only get via paying, if it is Twitch Prime or something else, those are the good ones. The ones you get through Clan Wars, through personal missions, through Christmas, they are the worst ones. Those are the ones which give you the least amount of points. So this is just frustrating. Seriously, it's just stupid and frustrating. So either Wargaming completely boots the idea of instructors or they leave the idea in but they do not give crew points they only give a bigger multiplier to your crew xp period because you cannot make them like they are in the current iteration of crew 2.0 you simply can't because that's pay to win that's literally pay to win because the best ones you have to pay money for and that's just straight up and straight down unfair. At the beginning of the video I did promise you a new idea which I want to show you. I want to have a crew 1.5, a soft transition to a new system which is fairer and more interesting for everybody. That's just what I want to do. I would keep the ideas of Crew 2.0 like the checkerboard, but I will change it a little bit around. I like the idea of having just one crew member and I like the idea to be able to ex have one crew be on three different tanks and I like the idea that there are no more 50 to 99% crews. Those are all ideas which I would straight yoink and use for my crew proposal. The thing is, in the current crew system, we basically have common skills and unique skills to the unique classes of the different crew members. So for example, common skills are Brothers in Arms, Repair, Firefighting and Concealment. Those are the common ones. While the unique ones, for example for the Commander, are Mentor, Recon, Check of Trade, Sixth Sense, Eagle Eye and RD Sixth Sense. While the Gunner has Armor, Snapshot and Dead Eye, Loader has Safe Storage, Adrenaline Rush, Intuition, Driver has Clutch Braking, Smooth Ride, Off-Road, Impact and Maintenance for the Engine, while the Radio Operator has Signaling, Situational Awareness, Relay station and call for vengeance. So it is kind of all over the place because the commander can have up to 10 skills while the loader only can go up to 7, with the gunner having 8, with the driver having 9, and the roid operator having 8. If you take all the common and the unique class specific perks. In my proposal, I would look to see if it's a if it's possible to give each crew mit crew member a maximum of seven skills. Straight up just seven skills and I'm taking some ideas of the current Crew 2.0's second iteration. Brothers in Arms, Repairs, Firefighting and Concealment, those common skills stay. But for example, we don't have Sixth Sense anymore. You know, Sixth Sense will be always there. Artist Expense will be always there. Then, 
Very important, a commander will get designated target, recon and check of all traits as their unique skill options. The gunner, armor, snapshot and a dead eye eagle eye combination. So you do more module damage while also seeing what the enemy has damaged as a module. You know, it kind of makes sense, you know, that the gun, this skill would work together. It's also what Wargaming is doing in Crew 2.0 right now. The gun, the loader will have safe storage, adrenaline rush and intuition. The driver has clutch and off-road combination, a smooth ride and an impact and engine maintenance combination. While lastly, the radio operator will have signal plus relay, which allows you to have more signal range as well as spotting the enemy for one second longer, situational awareness, a spotting skill, and lastly we would have terrain knowledge which makes you two seconds quicker unspotted. Now the big idea which I would like to promote is that you are only allowed to pick five skills. It doesn't matter if you have 20, 20 million points crews on your stings, you're only allowed to pick five. which right now in the current live server would be around 3.3 million XP. Meaning you would have 70 million XP left over. And you're like, holy shit, what are you doing with that? And here comes the best idea from World of Warships, Commander XP. A new resource which allows you to basically boost your crew, boost your whatever crew you want. So for example, if we say the idea of retraining your crew to a new tank, you know, the second and the third tank of your one crew costs loads of XP and credits. You might say, I've played so much that I have so much crew commander XP already laying around that I'm just going to go for the free option and pay 1 million commander XP to get this slot filled. Or you say, you know what, I want to grind out the new Czechoslovakian, excuse me, Czech heavy tank tree. And now, you have like 5 million commander XP laying around, bada bam bada boom, you can get right up there with your first 5 skill crew. Obviously, you might say we might need to adjust it a little bit, so if you want to get fully 5 skills, you might need to have around 10 million um, XP to make it a little bit more balanced. I don't mind that, because again, the whole idea of my system is that you still are competitive at a 4 skill crew, but also having the incentive to get a 5 skill crew, which allows you to gather this commander XP. The biggest difference, however, is that you cannot just pick 4 common skills and just one unique perk. No, you will only be allowed to pick 3 common skills out of 4, and you're only allowed to pick 2 out of 3 unique skills. Here I, for example, take an example. <laughs> I know, I'm stupid. Yeah, let's take the Chieftain. The Chieftain doesn't need concealment. So you will be going to go for Brothers in Arms, Repair and Firefighting. For the Commander, you will most likely go for Recon and Designated Target. As you just are able to keep the enemy a little bit spot longer and you just need Recon and usually Jack of All Trades doesn't really benefit you. You want a few range, but Jack of All Trades you usually are playing with a big repair med kit anyway. For the gunner, the gun doesn't really matter, so you go for snapshot and the dead eye eagle eye combination, so you do a little bit more module damage and you see which module you destroyed. Again, this is a skill right now Crew 2.0 has. For the loader, I would say I personally would go to go for adrenaline rush and intuition. Intuition is a super cool skill right now on the live server. Congrats to Wargaming. And I don't think I need safe storage because the tank doesn't have that hard of an ammo rack. <coughs> For the driver, we go most likely to smooth ride and the clutch breaking off road combination because I don't really go for ramming in the chieftain and the ancient maintenance. If I burn, so be it. And lastly, for the radio operator, definitely situational awareness. And then I can ask myself, do I want to have more signal range and spot the enemy for one second longer or want to get unspotted for two seconds? And then, boom, you have your five grit finished. And that is how it is. You don't have endless progression. You're just able to get more EXP for your crew. So you're not making the game faster. Then you, you have a goal you can achieve. You have a goal you can achieve. And if you go over that goal, you can use this commander XP to just make other crews better or put your crew in another tank. And for example, if you think, well, I'm just now at free skills right now. So I have to look around. I might not go for you don't need to go free common skills at the beginning. You can go for Brothers in Arms, then maybe go for Recon, Snapshot, Adrenaline Rin, Smooth Ride and Situational Awareness, and then go for Concealment, for example, if you're playing a light tank. You know, you don't need to go for firefighting or repair immediately. You can 
postpone that. And that's the thing. I hope I was able to partially explain it easy-ish for you to get my idea. But the whole point is make crew grinding finite while still giving a bonus to go out of your way to go further. You know, the commander XP. But make it fair, you know. If everybody suddenly has a finite amount of crew skills, it levels the playing field. Plus, you don't have some weird vehicle handling which is suddenly coming out of nowhere from random talents, from random, oh, I've bounced three people, now suddenly I have 2.5% more vehicle handling. Oh, I've did three times my HP of damage, now I have 100% quicker reload time, whatever, you know. We don't need such stupid talents. Wargaming, you yourself said that you do not want to game to be too complicated. That is why you took out the Object 263B, the tier 10 version, because it didn't fit into the line properly. That's why you booted the SU-12254. That's why you booted the Object 430B on tier 10. Because you said you wanted to simplify the lines. That is why you're hiding the 113. That is why you're hiding the Amex 30 prototype and the 30B. To make the game simpler. So we do not need an overcomplicated crew system. We don't need Screw 2.0. We need a soft transition to a more fairer version of the current crew system we have right now. And this is my idea which I want to propose. And yes, you have my contacts, just call me. So yeah, that's it. Probably a 30 minute long video explaining everything which is wrong with Crew 2.0 as well as giving a proper example how I personally would do it. I really do hope it wa I was able to convey my idea and it wasn't too, how should we say, complicated. Because I guess it might be a little bit of an issue. It was very important for me personally to be able to convey an idea how you could in theory fix Crew 2.0 and fix the current crew system. Because yes, I still am a firm believer that the current crew system is broken and needs to be fixed, replaced or just adjusted. I still think the intuition rework was a great idea. R6 extends, well it is a great idea but it's a little bit weirdly implemented right now. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about those ideas, what you think about those problems and what you think about Crew 2.0 and why it stinks. Write it down in the comment section below, write it in the forums, write it in the surveys which Wargaming provides to you. My name is Raging Raptor. don't forget to subscribe to give me some love for this shitload of work we had to do for this video and to give some love to my editor. Cheers! and I'll see you around. <laughs>